Hi guys, in this video we'll look at inequalities, linear inequalities, examples, and we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly are inequalities? We may come across solutions to problems that are described by a region instead of single numbers. For example, let's say we have a quadratic, and we'd like to ask the question, for which x is y0? But now we can ask a different question, namely, for which x is y strictly less than 0? We can see graphically that it is all the points in between the minus 1 and the 2, because the graph is underneath the y-axis, but it is not at the points minus 1 or at 2 themselves, because y equals 0 there. In simple cases, this region is a segment of the number line, but it could instead be an area of a plane. We can have a number line with 2 and 5 here and here respectively, and the solution could be all the points in between. But let's say we have our xy plane here with 3 here and 4 here. The solution to a given problem could be this whole area of this plane here. It can be useful to have a method of solving these problems and sketching their solutions. So what exactly are linear inequalities? We have seen that linear expressions only involve index 1 terms. Namely, x plus 3 is a linear expression. But also, 2x minus y minus 1 is also a linear expression. Both of these are index 1 terms. Similarly, a linear inequality only involves index 1 terms. For example, the inequality 3 lots of x minus 1 is strictly less than 0. Or 2 lots of y minus x is greater than or equal to 4. These are two linear inequalities. It is important to agree on and understand the notation we use. Namely, this symbol and this symbol mean less than and greater than respectively. And then this symbol and this symbol mean less than or equal to and greater than or equal to respectively. And then these types of inequalities are examples of strict inequalities. The other type of inequalities, this and this, are slack inequalities. We use standard algebra to solve linear inequalities. Let's say we have 6x minus 3 is strictly greater than 2x plus 5. Then we can put all the x's on the left and we get 4 lots of x on the left is strictly greater than 8 on the right. And then we can divide by 4 to both sides and get x is strictly greater than 2. All we have done is standard algebra that we would do with an equal sign to solve this inequality for x. We can represent the solutions of an inequality on a number line. Let's say we have minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 on our number line. Then to represent the above solution, i.e. x is strictly greater than 2, we put a circle at 2 and an arrow in the direction that we are headed in, i.e. x is strictly greater than 2. So 2, 3, 4 and so on are all part of this solution. Now whether we use a plain circle or a coloured in circle depends on the type of inequality that we have. Namely, if the inequality is strict, then we use a plain circle, and if the inequality is slack, then we use a coloured in circle. We may also have to represent two simultaneous inequalities. Namely, consider the inequality 3 is less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than 5. This can be split into two inequalities. Our first inequality is that x is greater than or equal to 3. And our second inequality is that x is strictly less than 5. But for the above, both inequalities are simultaneously true. So we can draw on our values on our number line, say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And then we can start by putting on our first one, namely we have a coloured in circle at 3, 
because this is a slack inequality and an arrow going off to the right. This is for our first inequality. And then for our second inequality, we can have a plane circle at five and an arrow going to the left because it's a less than. We would have a colorline circle at three and a plane circle at five and a line joining them up. This comes from having both our inequalities simultaneously true at the same time. Therefore, only this is our final solution. We must be careful with multiplication by negative numbers with inequalities. Consider the inequality 4 is indeed strictly greater than 2. And let's say we take both sides and multiply by minus 1. You would get a minus 4 on the left and a minus 2 on the right. But if we were to use standard algebra, then we would keep our inequality like this. But I'll just put a question mark here because it's clearly not the case that minus 4 is strictly greater than minus 2. In fact, it's the opposite way around. And so we have minus 4 is strictly less than minus 2. And so when we multiply by a negative, we must reverse the inequality. Let's say we have our inequality, minus x is less than or equal to 3. If we want to have just x on its own, we have to multiply by minus 1 to both sides. And so we get x on this side and a minus 3 on this side, but we have to reverse the inequality and have it this direction. So x is greater than or equal to minus 3. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to graph the values of x for which 10 minus 3x is strictly greater than 4. Our first step is to collect the like terms. We have our 10 minus 3x is strictly greater than 4. Therefore, we can keep our minus 3x over here, but we can push our 10 to the other side, so we have minus 3x is strictly greater than 4 minus 10, which is minus 6. Our second step is to divide both sides to find an inequality for x. Namely, with our minus 3x is strictly greater than minus 6, we need to divide to get just x on its own. So we divide both sides by minus 3. And therefore we get x on its own, and then by dividing by minus 3 we have a 2, and our inequality is going to be this way around, because we divided by a negative. Our third step is to recall the type of inequality. In general, these type of inequalities are called strict inequalities. Our fourth step is to recall the symbol used to represent strict inequalities. If we have a strict inequality, then we're going to have this symbol. Our fifth step is to graph the solution. We can put on some values, say minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Put down our plane circle for a strict inequality at 2. And because we have less than, it's going to go off to the left. Our second example asks us to graph the values of x for which 2 plus 4x is less than or equal to 8, and 3 minus 2x is strictly less than 4x minus 15. Our first step is to solve the first inequality. Our first inequality is 2 plus 4x is less than or equal to 8. This gives us 4 lots of x is less than or equal to 6 by subtracting. And then by dividing, we have that x is less than or equal to 3 over 2. Our second step is to solve the second inequality. Our second inequality is 3 minus 2x on the left hand side. And this is strictly less than 4x minus 15 on the right hand side. We can bring our x to the left and our numbers to the right. And so on the left we have our 18. And on the right we're going to have our 6x. Then we're going to divide by 6. But I want to have my x on this side. I'm not multiplying by a negative. All I'm doing is flipping around our inequality to make sure that we have it associated with our x in the correct direction. And so we have x is strictly greater than 3. Our third step is to recall the types of inequality. In general, inequalities like this are strict inequalities. And inequalities like this are slack inequalities. Our fourth step is to identify which inequality is strict and which is slack. Our first inequality is x is less than or equal to 3 over 2. Our second inequality is x is strictly greater than 3. And so our first one is slack, 
and our second one is strict. Our fifth step is to recall the symbols used to represent inequalities. If we have a strict inequality, we have a circle which is plain, and for a slack inequality, we have a coloured in circle. Our sixth step is to identify which symbol is for which inequality. Again, we have our x as being less than or equal to 3 over 2, and x is strictly greater than 3. Our first inequality we've identified as slack, and our second as strict. Therefore, we have a coloured in circle for the first one, and a plain circle for the second one. Our last step is to graph the solution. We can put on some points, say 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we need to have our first inequality, which is going to be our filled in circle between 1 and 2, and it's going to be going off to the left. And then we have our plain circle at 3, and it's going off to the right. This is our solution, as well as any values of x that are greater than 3. Our last example asks us to graph the values of x for which 5 plus 3x is less than or equal to 8x, and 9x minus 3 is strictly greater than 7 plus 4x. Our first step is to solve the first inequality. We have our 5 plus 3x is less than or equal to 8x. By subtracting our 3x, we get 5 is less than or equal to 5x. Or similarly by dividing, x is greater than or equal to 1. Our second step is to solve the second inequality. We have 9x minus 3 is strictly greater than 7 plus 4x. By subtracting to the left hand side our 4x, we get 5x, and our right hand side is going to be 10. So we have 5x is strictly greater than 10. Therefore we have that x is strictly greater than 2. Our third step is to recall the types of inequality. These types of inequality are called strict inequalities. These types of inequalities are called slack inequalities. Our fourth step is to identify which is strict and which is slack. We have our x as being greater than or equal to 1, and our x is strictly greater than 2. The first is going to be slack, and our second is strict. Our fifth step is to recall the symbols used to represent inequalities. For a strict inequality, we have a plain circle. For a slack inequality, we have a filled in circle. Our sixth step is to identify which symbol is for which inequality. We have our x is greater than or equal to 1, and we have our x is strictly greater than 2. The first is slack, and the second is strict, and therefore we have a filled in circle for the first one, and a plain circle for the second one. Our last step is to graph the solution. If we have our values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, we have a filled in circle at 1, and then this goes off to the right because it's greater than or equal to, and then we also have a plain circle at 2, again off to the right. Now here, the two inequalities overlap, but since the second one is stronger than the first one, it is actually the solution, and the first inequality was unnecessary. If we look at our second inequality, both of the inequalities have to be true at the same time, and therefore our solution is only actually the second inequality, because our second inequality has to be true anyway. And so our first inequality cannot add any new values. Any values in the range between 1 and 2 cannot work, because it is not simultaneously the case that x is strictly greater than 2 at the same time, because the second inequality is not satisfied for these values. And therefore, this is our solution. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.